Wonderful. So um, let me just speak for just a moment about what we're doing here today. We are recording it. So thank you for uh, permit, giving your permission, explicit, uh, tacit permission for the recording. Um, and I will tell you just a little bit about what the project is, and then we will hear from each of the students about what they've created through the project. And then we will have some time at the end uh, to have some discussion or some cross talk about what we've been able to accomplish. So this project is called how the crowdsourced spatial data revolution it can use, can complement official data. So basically what we're trying to study is uh, understand how can open volunteered spatial data and mapping help produce data and knowledge and fill in some of the gaps needed by our public institutions in order to build more resilient communities and infrastructure. So integrating the volunteer geographic information into official cartographies. What are the barriers? What are the opportunities? What is happening? Can we experiment with this and maybe create some tools and uh, inroads into figuring out the process of joining this wonderful data revolution that's volunteered spatial data with our official cartographies, which are very much in use for helping our communities um, respond to resilience and humanitarian development needs. So um, on the one hand, uh, we are really um, pleased to have the um, participation of um, Jean Wintemute and Nancy Aguirre. So Jean and Nancy and I are all a part of the uh, Geography Commission of the Pan American Institute for Geography and History, Instituto Panamericano de Geografía e Historia, de OEA. And um, I want to shout out a hello, special hello to Cesar Rodriguez, who is the Secretary General. Thank you for being here and for supporting the role of the EPH in our work. Thank you, Cesar. Um, so that's where we are making these connections into the official cartographies. And then on the side of the uh, youth mappers uh, and, and the volunteer geographic information, uh, we are leveraging uh, a network of students um, around the world that's called Youth Mappers. Um, this is a project we started uh, five years ago that has really turned it into a youth movement. Uh, there's now 222 universities with groups of students on their campuses who are creating volunteer data specifically for humanitarian and development projects and purposes and to put it into their research. Um, so uh, Youth Mappers uh, is sponsored and co-founded by the U.S. Agency for International Development, the USAID Geo Center. And I'm really happy today that um, Carrie Stokes, who is the director of the USAID Geo Center, is here with us today as well. Hello, Carrie. I saw her pop on just a moment ago. Um, we'd like to just have Carrie just give us a couple of words of welcome uh, before we turn it over to the students. Um, our students have been working with our hosts all, all summer uh, since about May. Um, trying to really have a better understanding of that connection between volunteer data and official cartographies. So Carrie, can you just say a quick hello for us and a welcome? Sure, thank you for having me. It's wonderful to join you all today. Again, my name is Carrie Stokes and I'm the Chief Geographer at USAID, the US Agency for International Development which proudly supports your work with the Youth Mappers program. I'm also the director of our Geo Center and lots of GI specialists around the agency um, who are most excited to, to see the work that you all do. And I couldn't be more pleased to hear more about the work uh, today as I'm going to get an opportunity to hear and see you so just wanted you to know that we are so proud of the work that um, is going on with the Youth Mappers program. And we're most proud to recognize that we have hit our five-year mark this month when we first launched it uh, in Washington, DC on Capitol Hill. 
So I am just going to look forward to listening and uh, watching and answering any questions if you have any of me, but really I'm here to be in support of you and the work that you do. Thank you so much, Carrie. Thanks for your time. Um, Cesar, would you like to just say a quick hello? Uh, yes, many thanks for, for the invitation. I am very proud to, to stay here. And I think that is very important, the, the, the topic that you, we are talking in this, in this meeting. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you. So thank you to USAID and the uh, Instituto Panamericano de Geografía Historia for your, all of your support throughout this project and also to the National Science Foundation, of course, because um, uh, that's what's helping us support the students in their work. So um, without any further delay, I'm going to hand it off to Jean, who's going to take us through the students' projects. And thanks to each and every one of you for hosting them. We'll make sure and give you some acknowledgments as we go through these projects. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Patricia. Um, and thank you very much, um, Cesar Rodriguez, for your support for Paige and Carrie Stokes for your support um, for the Youth Mappers. And I wanna say thank you, first of all, to all the students that have worked very, very hard um, in the last probably five or six months. Um, and a thank you to Nancy Aguirre um, for being the co-PI with myself. Um, I am Jean Winnemute Parcher, as some may know me from earlier times, um, and I am the Vice President of the Geography Commission of the Pan American Institute of Geography and History. I'm a retiree of the U.S. Geological Survey um, and have been um, involved in this, in this project, very exciting project. Um, I want to thank each of the um, Institutos Geográficos Nacionales, the National Geography Institutes, the um, uh, of the different countries that we've worked with. Um, I see, um, sorry, something came up about Adobe to install. Um, get that off the screen. Um, you know, I want to thank Anehi and their representatives, Celine. I want to thank um, Jamaica, Simone Lloyd. I want to thank Costa Rica. Um, and Colombia, I see um, uh, Nahora Inez um, that has been working very closely with Adele and, and Nancy, and Panama, their Instituto Geográfico Nacional, Isis Tejada, um, let me see who else. Um, in, unfortunately, in Belize, Alfred Cow could not attend today. They're having elections. Um, Dominican Republic, I see um, Lisette um, from the Instituto Geográfico Nacional and Tal vez Senia. Um, I probably have missed some people. Um, I think um, Jonathan from Costa Rica. And then I also want to really thank the representatives from the Youth Mappers and Open Street Map, um, Maria Demes from Panama, Jason Mora from Costa Rica. Uh, um, Ranford Campbell, I believe, from Costa Rica, or uh, no, is that Belize? No, Jamaica. Oh, Jamaica, I'm sorry, thank you. Um, and from Belize, we may have some, I think we have Santos Chicos, um, and well, Celine Jaquin, who is from, representing Nehi and um, in Open Street Map. Um, so there's, I'm sorry if I've missed anyone, but um, you've all been a great participant in this project. Um, before I go ahead and we will have each of the student present for three to four minutes, um, I want to um, introduce Nancy Aguirre and allow her to say a few words. Um, and I will, we have told each of the students that they are free to present in either English or Spanish, what they're most comfortable in. Um, disculpe que yo no voy a hablar totalmente en, en español porque estoy más cómodo en inglés, um, pero tal vez Nancy va a hablar en español. Entonces voy a dar la palabra a Nancy Aguirre por un momento para hacer la introducción de ella y después regreso a mí para um, empezar a um, Con, con las um, presentaciones. Sí, buenos días, Buenos días, Jim. Me alegra por 
disculpas que por el tiempo les por saludar y les todos en la reunión. Pues nada, que soy que sea la fila de los niños que han hecho un punto. Nancy, gracias, pero su, um, su sonido no está muy bueno. You're, you're, yeah. tal, tal vez you can put the information in the chat. ¿Me escucha? Thank you, Nancy. I'm so sorry that that your um, internet is not working as clearly, but you can put your information in the chat because um, we would love to hear what you've said, uh, but we'll have to read it. Um, and Nancy has been a great um, co-PI in this, in this work. So now I want to turn it over um, to each of the interns that have been working with each of the countries. Um, and if the, um, anyone has questions, comments, please feel free to write it in the chat. Um, and Nancy will be reviewing those, so will I. So to start off with, um, let's start with Mexico and Vivian Arriaga, who has been working closely in Mexico with Aneji and with, um, I think, OpenStreetMap. Hello. Hello, everybody. Um, I will be speaking in Spanish as um, that's what I've been doing all summer. But if anyone has a strong preference for English, just let me know and I can switch over here and there. OK. Um, bueno, yo soy Viviana Arriaga. Eh, soy estudiante de la Universidad Estatal de Arizona. Eh, ahí conocí a, a la doctora Patricia Solís, quien, como ya saben, es fundadora de la organización de Youth Mappers. Um, y por ese medio llegué a dar con este proyecto de investigación. Entonces, este verano estuve trabajando eh, muy de cerca con eh, Paloma Merodio de Inegi y Celine Jacan también, ahora de Inegi y de Geochicas y OpenStreetMap México. Um, tuve mucha suerte de, de dar con ellas dos porque ya tenían un interés um, muy fuerte en las fuentes no tradicionales eh, para la información geográfica eh, y especialmente para los datos participativos. Um, en, todo el, en, este, en este verano eh, que acabamos de pasar estuve haciendo... Um, entrevistas a, a representantes de, de, de varios tipos de, de organizaciones, ya sea eh, gubernamentales o no gubernamentales. Por ejemplo, eh, del lado de gobierno, eh, la mayoría de las entrevistas fueron a, a personas de INEGI mismo, um, especialmente eh, personas que estuvieron involucradas con el proyecto de cartografía participativa de INEGI, que es... Eh, un proyecto que involucra al, al, a la, a la, al público en general y especialmente a estudiantes universitarios en, en aportar a la actualización de, lo, de los datos de INEGI, um, especialmente como para actualización, por ejemplo, nombres de calles y infraestructuras que existen o no abandonadas o no, etc. Um, y también, por ejemplo, con, con AVIO el, y el Servicio de Administración Tributaria, y luego algunos grupos como en, entre gubernamental y no gubernamental, como centros eh, más pequeños especializados de investigación, como el Centro Geo, eh, 
y ONGs como eh, BCC Club. Y, um, y, y la Universidad Autónoma del Estado de México, que me, me alegra mucho también comunicarles que ya eh, por fin en el primer capítulo de Youth Mappers en México ya abrió en, 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 en YMX hace una semana ya. Um, y bueno, entonces en estas entrevistas eh, algunos... Eh, como características particulares de México es que ya, tenía, ya hay mucho interés de parte de las instituciones geográficas por este tipo de datos um, y el, especialmente que desde cada, por ejemplo, desde las ONG, desde los estudiantes, de los institutos geográficos, están muy activos. El, lo que falta en este momento es, es conectar todas esas piezas eh, pero por suerte sí hay ya campeones dentro de cada grupo de estos que, que, que están ya haciendo el labor, el labor de, um, de fomentar los datos participativos e integrarlos a los, a los oficiales. Entonces, eh, quizás el... Ok. Bueno, entonces cedo la palabra a eh, Dan Council, de, que estuvo en, participando en Belice. Gracias. Gracias, Vivian, y gracias a, a, a Neji y a um, Celine para, para su apoyo. Dan. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Dan Council. I go to Ball State University in Indiana, and my country of focus was Belize. Um, my host organization was the Land Information Center. And then um, more specifically, I was working closely with Alfred Cal, who is the senior land information officer. So this research began with conducting interviews, which for me included contacts within the Land Information Center and also members of the OpenStreetMap community in Belize. So some key takeaways from these interviews. First, incorporating crowdsourced data into official data has been difficult. Um, those in charge may not always be interested in or trusting of crowdsourced data. So projects that involve crowdsourcing do not always get promoted. Um, what I have gathered is that in order for crowdsourcing to become more common, there probably needs to be standards. Um, if government agencies or other organizations are ever going to be able to use it um, to collect data. I think also just having more of a discussion internally about crowdsourcing would um, be helpful in getting more people interested. Also, there is a very small OpenStreetMap community in Belize, but I believe that there's still a lot of potential there because many of the rural areas of the country continue to remain undermapped. Um, like many of the countries all of us worked with over the summer, um, official data is not always open to the public. So OpenStreetMap is a way for there to be that kind of access to information. Um, so from my discussions with Alfred, he mentioned that he thinks a way to use crowdsourcing in Belize would be to collect street addresses in Belmopan, um, which is the capital. So as part of my work, I drafted a plan for how the Land Information Center could conduct a crowdsourcing project related to this. Um, so. Some of the contents of this plan included various methods that they could use to complete the project. Uh, you know, the main one being OpenStreetMap, of course. I also talked about some of the current limitations, such as a potential lack of spatial data volunteers to do the crowdsourcing. And then lastly, how the government um, could already, could utilize OpenStreetMap data that has already been created. And then the last part of my experience um, revolves around student engagement. So back in September, I led a presentation for GIS students at the University of Belize, which was thanks to Dr. Santos Chicas, which is on the call right now. Um, this university is also in Belmopan and they do not have a Youth Mappers chapter. So this presentation was more about, you know, like what Youth Mappers is, how students could create a chapter if they wanted to. Um, and then also talking about volunteer geographic information, OpenStreetMap, and mapathons, just to kind of show an example of what other youth mappers chapters are doing. 
Um, and then in addition to that, I assisted in a joint Jamaica and Belize workshop, which I'm sure you'll hear more about later. Um, so in this workshop, we had a section where Alfred uh, presented about official data use in Belize and how the country could benefit from crowdsourcing, um, such as for emergency management and disaster response, particularly flooding, which uh, is a major issue over there. And yeah, that just about sums up my main highlights. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dan. And thank you to Santos Chicos and Alfred Kyle and everyone you worked with in Belize. So next we will go to Emily Wolf, who will talk about her experience in Costa Rica. Hi there, everyone. Um, I will be speaking in English since that is my native tongue. Um, so hello again, my name is Emily Wolf. Um, I'm a student at the University of Southern California in Los Angeles, um, and I entered this summer with the Instituto Geográfico Nacional de Costa Rica, or the National Geographic Institute of Costa Rica. Um, in my preliminary meeting, it was very clear that my hosts had not explored the thought of volunteered or crowdsourced spatial data integration um, very much, if ever. So this precedent kind of sculpted my internship for the remainder of the summer for a government institution that has never pursued such a concept um, or had understandable hesitations towards VGI integration and was also reasonably occupied uh, addressing the coronavirus pandemic, my internship was largely, largely an exploratory one. Um, I aimed to lay a very sturdy and convincing foundation for the IHANA's future exploration of VGI integration. Thus, my internship had two main goals. Firstly, assess the, the current crowdsourced geospatial data landscape in Costa Rica. And secondly, identify and communicate the opportunities and barriers that this offers. Uh, this primarily manifested in the beginning into a series of interviews that I conducted from June through September of 2020. In total, I interviewed 12 people, some more than once, but I mainly interacted with members of the OpenStreetMap community in Costa Rica, small and sparse, but accomplished nonetheless. Uh, these interviews span subjects of all experience levels, some casual community mappers, other OpenStreetMap veterans of over a decade, some in members of the IHANA, as well as university student mappers and youth mappers chapters. These interviews all yielded very similar conclusions. Um, one, that the OpenStreetMap uh, map in Costa Rica is incredibly sophisticated. And secondly, there was not a channel of communication between community mappers and the government. So this latter point uh, instantly encouraged me to start constructing this channel of communication um, with the IHANA so that it continues to grow even after uh, my internship concludes. So back in September, we held our first meeting regarding the future prospects of VGI integration uh, held with two members of the IHANA and two experienced and committed OpenStreetMap contributors that I had worked with over the summer. Um, this was an incredible preliminary meeting the subsequent meetings are to be scheduled soon, uh, but the impassioned interest that both sides expressed in collaborating towards this unified goal of bettering Costa Rica's maps through community mapping was just so wonderful to see. Um, and this was not just an inspiring meeting, but a productive one as well. Legal barriers and skepticism towards VGI competence were also addressed. Um, also, another part of my internship was just creating this final report. Uh, to kind of consolidate all of my research uh, and findings over the summer for the IHANA. Um, this includes a comparison of the OpenStreetMap community constructed quality guidelines, as well as the IHANA's data standards, so kind of comparing those. Um, also, there were suggestions for pilot projects that the IHANA could launch uh, once they feel confident enough in pursuing these principles. Um, also, examples of other projects um, that other government uh, institutions have leveraged uh, who knew that the Ministry of Public Works and Transportation of Costa Rica has six pages where open street map maps are used as a base map. Um, and then lastly, just a thorough summary and discussion of the crowdsourced geospatial data landscape uh, that was informed by my entrevistas. Um, I want to give a two really big thanks to Jean Parcher and Nancy uh, Aguida for their incredible support and assistance in the very few language barriers I had and Patricia for her very incredible direction. Um, I'm extremely grateful that I was able to introduce and help expand the pursuit of VGI integration in the IHANA. I wish I could take credit for all of this progress, but really a large part of this was just the commitment displayed by all of my contacts in Costa Rica. So I really do have a deep admiration and appreciation for all of those that I work with. Um, and that's my question, so thank you. 
Thank you very much, Emily, and thank um, all those costarricenses for uh, su apoyo. Um, thank you. So to go next to Panama and to Calvin Zhang, um, yeah. he will present about his work. Hello, can you hear me well? Yes. Okay, yeah. So before I start, I'm Kelvin. Hola, me llamo Kelvin, and um, I'm a student at the University of Chicago. Me llamo um, estoy un estudiante en la Universidad de Chicago. Y vamos a presentar en, en español, uh, y voy a compartir mi pantalla. Sí, ustedes pueden ver. Sí. Uh, sí. Y, y sí, uh, y bienvenidos a como nuestro proyecto de Panamá. Y vamos a hablar sobre um, estos cinco puntos. Uh, primero, uh, es la motivación del proyecto. Y trabajé con la institución geográfica Tommy Guardia en Panamá con ISIS. Uh, la institución tiene datos geográficos sobre las ubicaciones, nombres y otros atributos de calles. Sin embargo, el problema es la nomenclatura y este es un reto de datos muy común. Um, en este proyecto, los nombres oficiales de las calles y los nombres que la gente usa en la actualidad pueden ser muy diferentes. Por lo tanto, queremos empezar un proyecto piloto de datos geográficos voluntarios o datos um, espaciales de colaboración colectiva en una zona pequeña de Panamá. Y necesitamos una plataforma en la que los voluntarios pueden ver información sobre calles en la base de datos oficial, evaluar la exactitud de esta información y sugerir cambios como otro nombre de calle. Y aquí están los datos oficiales de calle en el formato de mapa. Las líneas son las calles y los puntos son los nombres oficiales con calles. Pero los datos no contienen información sobre qué punto o nombre relaciona con qué calle. Por lo tanto, convertí los datos oficiales a una base de datos de ciclo para identificar estas relaciones. Y he buscado que hay muchas calles uh, sin nombres oficiales. Y no aseguramos que las calles que tienen nombres ofic oficiales uh, tienen los mismos nombres en la actualidad. Por lo tanto, necesitamos un proyecto piloto para corregir los nombres. Y hemos explorado uh, muchas plataformas para que los voluntarios puedan coleccionar datos y usamos um, Open Data Kit y la extensión Open Map Kit porque son gratis y tienen muchas funciones. Y ODK es una plataforma con tres partes, desarrollar un formulario, completar el formulario en móvil, en móvil y recoger las respuestas en un servidor. Y MK es como una extensión de ODK para crear una pregunta de tipo geográfico o de mapa. Y estos son los pasos básicos del proyecto. Primero, uh, construimos un formulario que los voluntarios van a usar para interactuar con datos oficiales, ver el mapa y coleccionar datos sobre calles. Después, el voluntario va a descargar el formulario a su móvil, completarlo y cargar su respuesta a un servidor personal. Finalmente, podemos ver un ejemplo de respuesta aquí. Y aquí hay unas imágenes de formulario, de servidor y de una respuesta. Y el final parte del proyecto es demostrar la potencial de coleccionar datos voluntarios a través de um, un ejemplo de análisis de estos datos. Creamos un programa de Python que evalúa la exactitud del nombre oficial a través de comparar la similaridad entre un nombre oficial y un nombre voluntario. Por ejemplo, la computadora puede identificar qué es el nombre, um, que el nombre oficial Calle Orense es el mismo que el nombre voluntario Calle Oreo. Y también la computadora puede conocer que Calle, calle Osaka y Osaka es el mismo. Uh, um, y como después, uh, podemos mapear uh, los puntos con nombres uh, en la que el color es el nivel de la exactitud de nombre oficial. Y es, hay, hay mucha información y mucho trabajo, pero muchas gracias para todos para como su uh, interés en este sujeto. 
Gracias, Calvin. Muy bien su español y, y su proyecto. Y gracias por el Instituto Geográfico Nacional para su apoyo. Um, trabajando mucho con, con Isis Tejada. Y next, um, we will go to Colombia. And Adele Bertness will speak about her, um, her work in Colombia. And so we will go to you, Adele. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, my name is Adele Birkinis. I'm going to be speaking in Spanish, but I'm happy to follow up with information in English after my presentation, if desired. Pues buenos días, me llamo Adele Birkinis y me gradué de Vassar College esta primavera. Para empezar, me gustaría agradecer a Patricia, Jean, Nancy y Vivian por facilitar esta beca de investigación. Y especialmente a Nancy por ser mi mentora y por apoyar todos los aspectos de mi participación en este programa. También me gustaría dar las gracias a la profesora Nora Carvajal Sánchez de los estudios de posgrado en geografía de la Universidad Pedagógica y Tecnológica de Colombia. Ella coordinó mi pasantía de investigación con el convenio de UPTC y el Instituto Geográfico Agustín Codazzi este verano. Como parte de mi beca de investigación, trabajé en tres proyectos. En primer lugar, con la asistencia de Nancy, realicé otro, ocho entrevistas con diez empleados de tres agencias, el IGAC, la Unidad de Planificación Rural Agropecuaria del Ministerio de, de Agricultura y Desarrollo Rural, y el Instituto Humboldt, y las entrevistas trataron el tema de la incorporación de la información geográfica voluntaria en los datos oficiales de Colombia. En segundo lugar, facilité una serie de talleres sobre la cartografía colaborativa y Youth Mappers con María Fernanda Peña Valencia, que sirve como embajadora regional de Youth Mappers en Colombia. Estos talleres fueron presentados a los estudiantes y la facultad de UPTC, pero recibimos con gusto miembros de la comunidad geoespacial de varios países hispanohablantes. Llevamos a cabo tutoriales de herramientas de código abierto que están disponibles para el mapeo remoto y el mapeo en campo. Y también presentamos una introducción a Youth Mappers y el proceso de establecer un capítulo. En tercer lugar, trabajé en, en colaboración con Zoraida Guevara y Juliana Combariza de la UPRA para planificar un proyecto de cartografía colaborativa como parte de su iniciativa existente de mapear los paisajes agropecuarios de Colombia. Su proyecto generará unas cartas que pueden ser utilizadas como herramientas de gestión sostenible de las comunidades agropecuarias. Cree una metodología para el componente de crowdsourcing de este proyecto que especifica todos los pasos relevantes, incluyendo el mapeo remoto a través de OpenStreetMap y el mapeo en campo a través de aplicaciones de código abierto. Para concluir, me gustaría decir muchas gracias de nuevo por esta oportunidad fenomenal que informa el trabajo que hago actualmente como analista geoespacial con la Agencia de los Estados Unidos para el Desarrollo Internacional, USAID, y uh, miembro del equipo que apoya el programa de Youth Mappers. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, Adele, y muy, muchos éxitos en Colombia. Um, next, we will go to um, one, Jamaica. One second, Jean. Um, can, uh, can we take just one minute? Uh, we have a request. Uh, Adele offered to um, speak a quick summary in English at the end. So could you just take one minute to do that? There's a request in the chat, Adele, for that. Just one minute. To a provide summary. a summary now? Yes, just provide a, a quick summary. Um, one minute sure. spoken. Yeah, so uh, this summer I worked with Columbia and specifically I completed an internship uh, with the uh, Geographic Institute there, the Agustin Codassi Geographic Institute and also um, the uh, Pedagogical and Technological University of Columbia. And my uh, project had three parts. First, I conducted 
eight interviews with um, 10 employees of agencies in Colombia, uh, the Geographic Institute, the Rural Agricultural in, um, Unit, and Humboldt Institute, which is a, an institute that collects data on biodiversity. And uh, my second part of the project was, was to uh, facilitate a series of workshops on um, uh, volunteer geographic information and uh, tools um, open source tools for collecting crowdsourced uh, geospatial data. And I did this um, in collaboration with the Youth Mappers Regional Ambassador in Colombia, Maria uh, Fernanda Pena Valencia. And these workshops were for uh, UPTC uh, students and faculty, but we also welcomed uh, participants from the Spanish speaking geospatial community globally. And then finally, I also worked to develop a methodology for uh, incorporating crowdsourcing into um, a, a, an agricultural landscape mapping project for the Colombian government. Thank you, Adele. And, um, and if there are other um, requests for translations, please put it in the chat and uh, we, will, um, we will try to um, provide, so thank you. Next, we will go to Jamaica, where Sawyer McCarley and um, Mason Jones worked um, very closely with Simone Lloyd. Um, and so I will go ahead and have Sawyer speak first um, about his experience and um, his results. And then we'll go to Mason. Hey everybody. Um, first, I want to apologize. I went to a public library in hopes to have better Wi-Fi, but failed to recognize that COVID is still a thing, so I have to present a mask. Um, but I'm going to share my presentation real quick. So like Jean said, um, I did my uh, internship this past summer with Jamaica, spe specifically working with the National Emergency Response GIS team. Um, with Simone Lloyd and Mason as well. Let me try to find. Yeah. Oh, it's not working. Sorry, I can't get my screen to share. There we go. Um, so I just wanted to give a brief process of the game plan that I went through. Um, and also that it changed every five days. I was wanting to do something different. Um, but first, Simone gave us the interviews mid-June. And then after that, we um, took those interviews and I wanted to reach out to other organizations for feedback um, on tips and project creation for my final deliverable. After that, I looked to find patterns within the interviews. And then I took notes during the Mapathon um, that was held between Jamaica and Belize um, that Mason, um, held and then I use those tips to create a template or a program that addresses these issues. The issue or the agencies and organizations that I had an internship with and got to speak to was the National Environment and Planning Agency, the National Spatial Data Management Branch, the NSDMB, the Ministry of Local Government Community Development, and the National Emergency Response GIS team, of course, with Simone. Um, so this is what I did after the interviews. I went through and just typed out all of the different quotes that talked about VGI data, the different pros, the different cons. And if you were to look at my information right now, my, uh, my notes, it's very colorful. Um, I went through and highlighted specific puzzles and things to try to make specific things that I could add to the presentation at the end. Um, and I took these specific findings and I created um, some general themes. And some of the themes that I found was there is a push for VGI data, um, but however, it might be restrained due to economic push um, that can be provided by the organizations because it is expensive. Um, VGI data, if cleaned and updated more regularly, could be a great voice between the people and the government. VGI data, if already used in the sector of uh, emergency management, um, so VGI data and government data could play off of each other within the private and public sectors. And the last general theme is with so many municipalities working within the nerdist and the Jamaican sector, it's hard to find a concurrent path in the um, transition of seasons on and off hurricane season. Um, for number four, respectfully, I reached out to another organization in Puerto Rico 
called resiliency um, to ask for guidance on how to better organize different parties of a project. Many of her tips are listed in the physical deliverable that I sent to Simone. Um, and my final deliverable I sent out over to Simone in two parts. And the first part is a graph that shows how this training program could work pre, during, and after a hurricane season. Um, and the deliverable contains a lot of tips and links to how to train people more efficiently in validation tools, um, what different information we could use to use this uh, maps. Um, and the three organizations that would be used in this training program is NERGIS, of course, and NERGIS as a government and private sector. During this deliverable, they could provide data for hot OSM and youth mappers while providing joint training on disaster recovery. Um, working with NERGIS would be youth mappers and youth mappers is a public and college institution. It is trained in validation tools and disaster recovery to help open data become more efficient within the Jamaican sphere. And within this platform, we would use hot OSM as a foundation to make these maps. Um, so just wanted to say a quick thank you for everybody. So, yep, and I'll pass it on to Mason. Thank you, Sawyer. <laughs> um, as you said, my name is Mason Jones. I'm a graduate student at Texas Tech University. And like Sawyer, I was also placed in Jamaica to discuss um, or to study the, um, the interest in VGI data. So first of all, I just have to thank Simone Lloyd so much for helping us organize and uh, the interviews and the events. She was truly indispensable in making everything we did happen. So uh, I had interviews with um, several of the government agencies that are a part of NERGIST, the National Emergency Response GIS team. One of the organizations that's a member of it is the National Land Agency, which, um, they kind of express similar ideas to what's been said before, where they're interested in using VGI data, but they're concerned about the, the quality of the information that is produced in it. Um, the same thing was repeated when I interviewed um, a professor at uh, Rico University, and uh, a similar, similar response there, where they're just not too confident in the, in the results produced by OSN data. So, as part of my deliverable, I wanted to kind of focus in on what's being done to address possible discrepancies in data versus real life. So I created this, this um, Youth Mappers Mapathon workshop event between the countries of Jamaica and Belize to see if the international community could create um, a map for Belize and determine how accurate it was in real time. So on October 22nd, with the help of Sawyer and Dan, um, we held the event to, um, to map um, COVID-19 in the Orange Walk region of Northern Belize. We uh, had invited guest speakers, including um, Simone Lloyd and Mr. Alfred Cow, to speak from their individual countries to describe how they would use VGI data and what their um, departments are currently doing. And at the end of the event, we had an hour long session where all of the 60 attendees were devoted to mapping the region of Orange Walk in Northern Belize. At the end of the event, we had, uh, we had completed an area about 40 square kilometers, creating uh, mostly buildings for the project. And that's a, that made up about 30% of the total project. So that was just the completed tasking areas, not including the non-submitted completed tasking areas. So the UN is the um, organization that, was, uh, that requested the data and they're the ones who worked on validating it. When they were validating the data, they found that about 95% of um, the student submissions uh, required zero or less than 10 corrections on the map, which I thought was a pretty significant, pretty important result. It showed that um, our student mappers are producing quality, uh, a quality product. 5% of that required major revision, but you know, for, uh, for just student submissions, um, in the event of an emergency done in a single hour, I would say that's pretty productive. 
Um, to kind of close up these remarks, I spoke with Tushar Ahmed, who's a lead um, validator who works out of Kingston. And he said that the main corrections that, um, that these validators have to do mostly just have to do with sharpening the edges on buildings and making sure that buildings don't overlap. So you don't have buildings stacked on top of each other. The end result of the workshop just kind of showed that mapping data from OSM is um, generally pretty reliable and is useful in situations where you just need to get data really fast. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mason, and, and thank you, Simone, for all your support. Um, and uh, very impressive that 95% of the data was accepted with no revisions. So last we will go to, but very important, um, is the Dominican Republic, and Annie Lay will talk about her experience. Annie has mentioned that her camera is not working um, on her, her laptop, so she can present um, and we can listen to her, her um, comments. So go ahead, Annie. Okay. Hello, so I'll be presenting in Spanish. Um, so, hola a todos y buenos días. Mi nombre es Annie Lyne y yo soy estudiante de Sistema Informática de Geografía en la Universidad SUNY Buffalo de Nueva York. Para mi pasantilla, yo he estado trabajando con Lisette Rodríguez Medina, que es una investigadora del Instituto Nacional de Geografía José Joaquín Ungaria Morel en Santo Domingo, República Dominicana. Y nuestro objetivo era investigar la disponibilidad y uso de datos de voluntarios en la República Dominicana. Hicimos esto mediante la realización de varias entrevistas con varias personas que trabajan en diferentes partes de muchas organizaciones e institutos, desde profesores hasta investigadores y gerentes o directores, las instituciones que fueron parte de nuestra investigación por parte de entrevista fueron el Instituto Nacional de Geografía, la Universidad Autónoma de Santo Domingo, el Instituto Geográfico Universitario y de último la Compañía de Ecoturismo Mundial y Proyectos Ambientales SRL. Al concluir esas entrevistas, aprendí que la mayoría de los datos geográficos oficiales en la República Dominicana son gobernados por instituciones y organizaciones privadas y del gobierno. Los ONGs tienen una cantidad de datos que muchas veces el país no usa ni conoce y simplemente permanecen en su base de datos. So, las regulaciones que tienen las Naciones Unidas para trabajar con datos abiertos limita ciertas capacidades. Por el momento, no sabemos de ninguna otra aplicación en la Dominica Republicana, aparte de OpenStreetMap, que se puede usar sin conexión al Internet. Entonces, también pude entrevistar varios usuarios de OpenStreetMap en la República Dominicana, aunque no hay muchos o consistentes usuarios en OpenStreetMap de la Dominica Republicana, los pude entrevistar sobre su experiencia con datos voluntarios, OpenStreetMap y su uso de la aplicación. Muchos de los usuarios fueron atraídos a la aplicación porque se puede usar la aplicación sin tener que usar sus datos o conexión al Internet. A lo largo de nuestras entrevistas, también hemos realizado varios talleres y presentaciones para el Instituto Geográfico Nacional en Santo Domingo, donde yo les informo sobre qué son los mapeadores juveniles o dicho Youth Mappers, también sobre OpenStreetMap y los usos y beneficios de tener un capítulo de mapeadores juveniles en su instituto. Además, un taller donde les enseño cómo y qué se necesita para realizar un mapatón, incluyendo un, un, un último taller a donde les enseño a varios empleados del Instituto Nacional de Geografía cómo mapear usando el gerente de tareas en OpenStreetMap y cómo mapear a lo libre en la aplicación. Los talleres y presentaciones fueron ejemplos de cómo mapear, oh, perdón, de cómo mapear los datos voluntarios eh, que son usados y por qué son importantes. Al final de esta investigación, esperamos tener una redacción final 
de todas nuestras entrevistas y talleres con una plantilla para que la, la institución eh, tal vez pueda realizar sus propios mapatones y crear una idea de usar o compartir muchos de los datos que están en la base de los datos de los ONGs, instituciones del gobierno. Y muchas gracias por darme su tiempo. Muchas gracias, Ani. Um, I have a question for the English speakers. Do you want Ani to give a very short um, <clears throat> summary of what she said? Um, please uh, unmute yourself if you'd like that. Um, no, I guess, I guess that's good. All right, thank you. And um, just to let everyone know that um, all of the interns are working on um, final um, um, reports. And then Patricia, Nancy, and I will be working on um, um, consolidating those reports into papers and journal articles. Um, yes, hello. Um, okay. Now we have about 15 minutes left. Tenemos como 15 minutos. Um, para que todos los participantes de, de todos los países, so that all of the attendees from the countries um, are welcome to say comments or to ask more questions para hacer comentarios o hacer um, preguntar. Um, lo que queremos es que, que si tiene un, una pregunta o quiere hacer comentarios, que abra su lista de participantes Y, y raise your hand. I always want to say Alianza es humano en SNOS. Levante, levantar. Levantar, la, levantar el, el, la mano. Um, and Patricia will call on you. Um, and then you can say a few words. Um, Patricia. Right. Great. Uh, um, first, Celine would like to say something. Celine, por favor. Muchas gracias. No vi si se había levantado la mano. Um, yo quiero agradecer muchísimo a todos ustedes y al programa, a Vivian, a Patricia, a Jean, um, y comentar que es bien difícil desde las instituciones públicas, desde los institutos nacionales, pero también desde mis otras camisas, el activismo eh, de OpenStreetMap y de GeoChicas, tener el tiempo eh, de, de tener una práctica reflexiva sobre, sobre lo que sucede, ¿no? Sobre, Eh, la importancia, el alcance de los datos participativos, pero también sobre las dificultades comunitarias que permiten eh, tener ese, ese mayor alcance. Entonces, tenemos generalmente una práctica muy ligada a la acción y ya poco a la reflexión cuando no tenemos la suerte o la decisión de tener una carrera más académica donde pues ahí es lo que se hace. Entonces, es sumamente interesante para nosotros este programa porque a través de otra persona, eh, la practicante, Viviana en este caso, podemos eh, dar un poco más de, eh, concretar un poco más nuestras reflexiones y que una persona nos ayude a llevarlas más allá. Entonces, esto es de suma importancia, de sumo interés y yo espero que podamos dar continuidad y tener, eh, bueno, en caso de Viviana tenemos pensado una publicación pero también hay muchas formas para devolver ese conocimiento a la comunidad, que sean mini publicaciones y me encargaré de que eso suceda de nuestro lado en México. Muchas gracias, muchas felicidades, Vivian. Mm -hmm. Gracias, Celine. Um, gracias, Celine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Gracias, Vivian. ¿Otras preguntas mm -hmm. o comentarios? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Lisette Rodriguez. Um, so, so Lisette is asking, I think there was a couple of projects that was working on the street names, Dan, and, and uh, Calvin might want to take this question about how much time it took for developing that, those results. Oh, um, yeah, so to clarify um and i guess sorry i didn't say this for the english speakers but um long, long, long story short um here's a I, I guess um here here's the one page summary that that like 
for, for, for the English speakers, but basically the results, this is um, all test data. So um, we're not at the stage where like volunteers are actually collecting the data. Um, the project was mainly about implementing the infrastructure to do so, but this was just some test data to like sort of demonstrate that like if we had this actual data, then we could do this and to serve as a rationale and sort of like motivation um to continue the on uh, collecting volunteer data because then the whole point of this analysis is to sort of show that if you actually had this data here's all the cool things and the informative things that we could do with it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you calvin and as i remember your um your final report includes um how to do all the technical processes in Spanish yeah. so that it this can be shared um, with other other countries, correct? Uh, yeah, um, you could talk to um, Isis uh, Tejada for, um, for, for, for more on that, but yeah, she, she's the advisor from La Institución Tommy Guardia that I work with. Y ustedes okay. pueden hablar con Isis uh, Tejada para si, usted, um, si ustedes uh, interesar en este proyecto. <laughs> Yes, mm -hmm. Isis had to unfortunately jump off, she says, but um, we can definitely connect any of the hosts with other hosts. If you see some of the projects that this another student did that would be interesting for you, we can definitely connect you with more details. Si, entonces, si, si ven los resultados de otros estudiantes de otros países y tienen interés en, en aprender más, uh, con mucho gusto conectamos con los estudiantes, con los uh, los otros colegas y, um, para compartir esa información. Mm -hmm. eh, Lizette ya está um, pidiendo para la información. Yes. Y yo creo que ahora pido la palabra. Ahora. Mm -hmm. Adelante. Sí, bueno, de nuevo, muy buenas tardes para todos. Y yo quería decir que me pareció una experiencia muy interesante la que Adel tuvo aquí en Colombia y estuvo muy activa y realizó particularmente con nosotros, con nuestros estudiantes y como ella bien dijo, con más público porque se nos unió bastantes eh, personas a los talleres. Eh, entonces, eh, pues eh, quiero felicitar a Adel y... Eh, por su trabajo durante la pasantía aquí en nuestro programa de doctorado y maestría en geografía. Entonces, es de destacar que nuestro programa es de maestría y doctorado y Adel estuvo realizando aquí su pasantía. Entonces, eh, muy interesante y esperamos eh, pues, eh, poder dar continuidad o ampliar ese capítulo de Youth Makers en Colombia que, que ya están dando eh, con la ayuda de María Fernanda. Entonces, eh, bueno, un saludo para todos. Muchas gracias, gracias Nora. Um, y gracias a Del y Nancy para todo el apoyo en, en Colombia. Um, y uh, Lauren uh, está preguntando si existe algún uh, informe final, uh, como resumir todos los proyectos y todas uh, las lecciones que se han uh, podido aprender uh, por parte de los estudiantes y de, de todos ustedes. Entonces, sí, en el momento aún no existe, pero esa es reunión y la presentación es, es un parte de esto, podemos difundir este video de manera inmediatamente. Eh, se está grabando eh, esta presentación de hoy y vamos organizando un resumen, unos artículos científicos y también un, eh, un tipo foyer para eh, resumir no solamente lo que se han hecho, pero lo que se han aprendido. Eh, de los estudiantes, pero también de las actividades anteriores eh, que hemos eh, levantado unas eh, reuniones con eh, actores en el sector público de la región, eh, eh, principalmente en una reunión en República Dominicana, 
Entonces, hace, hace un año, hace dos años ya. Entonces, todo lo que hemos aprendido se van a resumir en un informe final. So, uh, we will have a final report, uh, not just of what the students have done and produced, but what we've learned and through this and through some of our other activities and interviews previously. That will come early next year. Mm -hmm. Okay, otros? Thank you, Patricia. Sí, para fin de año estarán listos eh, los de los estudiantes. Uh, so we will have the, the summary of, of the students' work by the end of the year, and then the, the final report for the whole project will come next year, next spring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Patricia, um, escuché y le, leí que varios países quieren que, que, que pueden seguir con este pasantía, aunque ahora no hay más fondos con el National Science Foundation. Um, pero sería un tema para discutir en más luego para dar ideas de cómo, con, cómo obtener más recursos para, para seguir con esos proyectos en sus países. Um, no sé si puede ser um, un proyecto técnico del EPH o lo que sea. Sí, con, con mucho gusto. El, el red de Youth Mappers, podemos, los estudiantes siempre están buscando cómo desarrollar sus capacidades de manera auténtica, ¿no? Y más allá de crear datos en, en el OpenStreetMap, pero utilizarlos, crearlos y utilizarlos. Entonces, si hay interés en seguir, eh, Solamente falta la idea de cómo organizarlo. No, no vamos a tener un programa así eh, tan amplio, eh, pero sí con USAID nosotros sí tenemos eh, como pasantías virtuales eh, que podemos conectar con otros estudiantes, eh, podemos reclutar un poco y invitamos también a los estudiantes de tus, tus propios países, ¿no? Porque existe en cada país o un capítulo, o un grupito, o tal vez una universidad donde tal vez hay interés. Y con mucho gusto eh, podemos hacer, ofrecer un poco de entrenamiento o, o apoyo en hacer las conexiones. Que los estudiantes en sus propios países eh, sí tienen interés en las, eh, desarrollar la capacidad eh, local. So we, we are very happy to try to broker those relationships. We do have a virtual internship. So if you want to continue, just you know, reach out to us and we can see how some of the programs that we still have ongoing, some funded through USAID still, um, that we can um, make those connections, not just with students from the United States, like this NSF project allowed us to do, but students in your own countries. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity for that. So just reach out to us with ideas. Uh -huh. right. eh, María Adamas eh, quisiera des que, que, quería decir que uh, además en Panamá Calvin eh, hizo un seminario un entrenamiento con los estudiantes ahí. The, the youth mappers. Uh -huh. The youth mappers. Uh -huh. Yeah. Again. Actually, the chapter in Panama was one of our first. Uh -huh. One of the very first. Yeah. First there okay. was Ghana and then Panama. <laughs> oh, wow, muy bien. True. Uh, yeah. Celine, ¿quiere añadir algo? <laughs> sí, eh, confirmo que es un tema muy de mucho interés. Eh, en el INEGI nos interesaría mucho seguir de alguna manera con este programa o, eh, o, o con Vivian que pueda dar seguimiento a través de otros, otras pasantías que tenga que realizar porque de su pasantía resultaron varios, eh, varios proyectos que o existían y se pueden expandir o, eh, o ideas de nuevas cosas. De hecho, a través del capítulo de Youth Mappers de Toluca eh, se van a retomar bastante colaboraciones con el INEGI, eh, pero nos gustaría bastante seguir eh, vinculados con ese programa. Y entonces me pregunto si esta, este sistema eh, se va a replicar el próximo año o fue únicamente este año. Eh, y comentar que eh, en todos casos eh, sería interesante pensar colaboraciones con, con el IPGH al respecto, en, en México al menos, para prolongar los beneficios de, de estas pasantías. Exacto. Exacto. En, produ en producir conocimiento, ¿no? Por ejemplo. Sí, entonces ese, ese proyecto en sí, como tal como es, 
no continúa año tras año tras año, es como un parte de, de, de la investigación, pero eh, Youth Mapper sí sigue, sí continúa y podemos siempre buscar manera de cómo se puede utilizar esto como un base de crecer y, y eh, dado al interés de cada país. Ok, so um, thank you so much for that. I want to give a special thank you to our um, Youth Mapper support, uh, Marcela Zaballos and Dara Carney Nelman, who are here, who helped with a lot of the communication behind the scenes. We appreciate you so much. Uh, we also have our Youth Mappers regional ambassadors. Jason is here and uh, Maria Fernanda. Did I miss anybody who's on the line who is helping us with that? Maria uh, so, Yes. Thank you so much as those are students that weren't the, um, well, and Adele actually playing a special role because she also is now working with the Geo Center. And then Vivian um, had a coordinating role as well as uh, our graduate student. So there was a lot of extra effort to help organize and we really appreciate them. And then to each one of you as hosts, it would not have been possible without you, without your opening, your institutions and your mind and your ideas and really especially in this time where the virtual nature of having to do this work adds an extra layer of complexity so we're very grateful that you were able to help us be creative through that and work through that and allow them to have an experience ideally we were sending them to your countries <laughs> um, in person that was the original idea Um, so we had to be creative and, and do a little bit, di uh, things a little bit differently. Um, so thank you for that. Entonces, muchas gracias por eso. Okay. Eh, pa para cerrar, eh, Jean, would you like to say some final words then? Um, well, I would like to, um, to repeat that, um, thank all of the host countries Thank all of the interns. You have done a fabulous job. Um, and I really, and, and thank Nancy Aguirre for always being there in Colombia and also um, behind the scenes to help us, Vivian Arriaga. But I really wanna thank you, Patricia Solis, for one, being the leader of this project, but also for um, saying, we are gonna go ahead and do this virtually, COVID or no COVID. <laughs> And I think that was actually an excellent decision. Um, it would have been better at, to have the students in their countries, but this way we had a lot of collaboration between the students. Um, and, you know, everyone went out of their way to work virtually. And I think it was an excellent, excellent decision on your part, Patricia. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you. So thank you everybody for your time today. We look forward to any other feedback that you might have. Um, please reach out to us. Um, you have our contact information uh, and we will make sure and follow up with you with the final um, summaries and uh, any other follow on that we can help support you. Mm -hmm. Muchas gracias a todos. Que tengan buen día. Felicidades a todos. Felicidades a los estudiantes. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm.